With the 150th anniversary of the Civil War approaching, the Newberry and the Terra Foundation came together to discuss ways of organizing an exhibition that perhaps would take another view of the Civil War. Homefront is an examination of the American Civil War, which focuses on what daily life was like for people in the North. The goal of the show is to get visitors to think about how people at home were affected by the Civil War, how it influenced their daily life. And we do that by looking at a number of different forms of visual culture. What people see in the galleries is what people saw in the 1850s and 1860s. What did they see at home? They saw magazines, they saw sheet music. Some might have seen paintings or lithograph reproductions of paintings, photographs. And so it's really about a visual message. How was the war communicated visually? The exhibition looks closely at various new uh, visual technologies that came into being uh, just prior to the Civil War. These include wood engraved illustrated weekly magazines such as Harper's Weekly or Ballou's Pictorial Companion. They brought together images and texts uh, really for the first time in these popular periodicals. People were reading the news, they were also seeing the news by the time of the Civil War. The first section of the exhibition talks about the way that people saw um, the firing on Fort Sumter in April 1861, and all of those images were produced within weeks of the firing of Fort Sumter. So today, to us, in an internet age, it might seem slow, but to people at home in the 1860s, the way this war came home visually and in news seemed to be incredibly quick. Along with the illustrated periodicals, there were also new forms of mapping uh, that uh, changed the look of maps, for instance. Statistical maps, as they were called, included uh, information and presented it in various ways, using new types of print technology for conveying that information. We ask in this exhibition, how did people at home understand what they were fighting for? In the North and the South, this was perceived as a war over the future of slavery. Slavery and the cotton economy were so intricately tied to each other, um, but the cotton economy tr tied the North and the South deeply. We show that transition of African Americans in this exhibition from slaves to refugees to contrabands to freed people. We had an opportunity here to tell a story of Indian wars going on during the Civil War. It's a story that I think is often erased from American memory of the Civil War, but it, it, it's a critical part of understanding the war. There, we tell the story of three specific Indian wars that go on between 1861 and 1865. The Dakota Wars, the Sand Creek Massacre, and the Navajo Long Walk. In the pieces you see in the women's work section of the exhibit, you'll notice that women are taking on some roles which are, I think, things that we would understand as a normal women's role and some roles which really are not. You see women acting as nurses. You also see women who are poor working in arsenals. There was this great volunteer impulse among Northern women that you see played out. In organizing the show, we were struck by the great variety of images of autumn. We were also struck by two landscape paintings that were painted in 1864 and exhibited that year. Thomas Moran's Autumn Afternoon, the Wissahickon, was quite interesting. People in the North and South, of course, were, were likely um, tired, uh, worn out from seeing pictures of war dead. So perhaps these uh, peaceful landscape paintings spoke to them on that level. Sanford Robinson Gifford was an American landscape painter, and he's the only artist who is represented in this exhibition here today who also was a soldier. And the painting that you'll see in the exhibition, which is called Hunter Mountain Twilight, really represents his home, where he is from. Yes, we'll rally round the flag, boys. We'll rally so there's two ways that people who miss the exhibition at the Newberry can see the content of the exhibition. One is on the Newberry's website. There's also a book that accompanied the exhibition called Homefront Daily Life in the Civil War North. It was published by the University of Chicago Press. It actually won a prose award from the American Publishers Association in the art exhibitions category. I think what we want to show visitors in this exhibition is how totalizing the war was and how when you were at home you saw this war. You realized that this war that seemingly was at a distance or at a remove affected your daily life. The Civil War was one of the first wars fought uh, not only on the ground between soldiers but fought in the visual culture and uh, the show really gets at how people in their homes, in their parlors, in the squares of their towns and villages shared news of the war experience, how they came together to support the Union, to show their patriotism through uh, singing songs together by wearing uh, military inspired fashion and accessories, uh, by convening sewing circles, by playing soldier. 
Um, these are the various ways that people, I think, reckon with the war and its impact on their daily lives.